Alright, what's going on guys? So yesterday I made a video breaking down the themes in Elden Ring and how they're an allegory for a lot of the themes found in alchemy. Which I believe that's one of my best videos I've ever made so I highly recommend you check that out. But on that video, one of you guys left a comment telling me to go look at this video by Shadiversity. Which is an hour long rant where he explains why he's upset with Elden Ring's story. So I went and I watched the video and by now I finished the video because I want to make sure and not misrepresent anything he's saying. But by the end of the video I had understand that the entire fundamental of his point is built on a misunderstanding. Now the reason I think it's important to cover this is because number one he has a very large audience and he's telling them something that ultimately isn't true. And number two, with Elden Ring, we're seeing a lot of new players who aren't familiar with the Souls games. And in a roundabout way, through this video, he's leading them astray and causing them to not understand how the story in these games work. Now, I also want to approach this in the most respectful way possible. In no way is this an attack on his channel. I think his channel's really cool. But the things he's saying in the video are ultimately not true. And I want to clear this up. They are completing the story of Elden Ring by needing to look at tweets from the developers. It is that incomplete in the game. Yes, I'm saying incomplete. They've actually left out essential elements in the story from the game for people to even piece it together. Even the detectives can't complete the story from the game. They need to get external material to complete it. The fundamental argument that he tries to make in this video is that Elden Ring's story is somehow incomplete. That the game is shooting itself in the foot by not providing the player enough information to understand what's going on. Now, if you're somebody that's beaten the game, you probably have a good understanding of what your objective was, why you did it, and who the core players in the story were. But the problem is, you probably don't understand understand everything. I can guarantee you don't understand everything. Because at the end of the day, this is a game where you're not supposed to know everything. I mean, the game has five different endings, and because of that, it's going to be open-ended. But with this in mind, let's take a look at some of his main points. Essential for the player, uh, the audience, to understand enough of what's going on to be invested to see what the results will be. To me, that's what I feel is essential world building uh, or storytelling enough to invest the audience the reader to want to know the conclusion now why do i feel elden ring doesn't do that because i understood very little going into the game there was an elden ring it was a sh it was shattered i needed to find it I didn't know, know why i didn't really know what it was causing all these bad things okay the world has gone to crap how and the how isn't that difficult to explain. In fact, I want to explain it to you and also by doing it, show you how awesome and incredible this world building is and explain why I think it's so great. And in doing that, I would also be providing with people who don't understand the lore or the story, the thing that was lacking for me, the essential story or enough of the story that you need to know to be invested to want to know how it concludes. Here is where I believe the misunderstanding begins. His main point is that the game does not present the main conflict and the main objective to the player early enough to get them invested in the story and get them to keep playing. I can understand why he might feel that way, but there is a reason for it, and let me explain. The game begins with an expositional cutscene that details the main objectives of our Tarnished. It tells us that the Elden Ring, the most powerful object in the world, was shattered, and that the demigod children of Queen Merica now hold the shards to that Elden Ring, and that it's our job to seek out those shards, find the Elden Ring, and become the Elden Lord. It also tells us about other Tarnished on the journey that are going to be helping us out along the way. That is very little information. But here's the catch. That is also all the information that the character in the game, the Tarnished that we play as, knows. Because we play as a Tarnished of no renown. We are not the chosen one of the story. It's the other Tarnished that are the chosen ones. Gideon Offnir, Goldmask, and the others at Roundtable Hold. They're the important ones. We are one of thousands or perhaps millions of unnamed, unworthy Tarnished who don't deserve to know all the specifics. We have to earn the right to learn the world building because why would Gideon Offnir, the character that is our exposition dump, bother investing his time into a tarnished he doesn't believe in. It's not until after we kill Godric and claim our first rune that he decides to go into detail about things like the Golden Order, the Greater Will, all of the things he goes on to complain about not knowing. It's obscure by design. But let's move on. I almost stopped playing Elden Ring because uh, I got immersed in the uh, uh, gameplay. Really, I was having fun, but then 
hey, I got that taste, that was fun. I decided, okay, maybe what I'll invest my enjoyment in the game is I'll try a different build. So I made a new character, Magic. <clears throat> Got her quickly to like level 30 or something using all the, the fun little farming spots and everything. Got some of the cool spells, got the wave, shockwave thing, went to one of the first areas. Clear, like, so I did all that and then I was like, oh, that was, that was fun. Now I'm done with magic already. Uh, I know I could get the big Kamehameha thing, but <clears throat> I know how that would go. And I was like, oh, wow. I've had this feeling with a lot of games, like, I'm already done with the Elden Ring. Like, I've immersed myself in so, enough of the gameplay that I, I know, I've enjoyed it, but now there's nothing holding me in, in Elden Ring. And so I was ready to stop. But out of curiosity, because there was so much I didn't know what's going on, I was like, I'll check out a lore video. The thing is, when I checked out that lore video, it was one Vardy videos, it was so damn good, the world building, and I want to explain why it's good, I'm going to get there was awesome that it pulled me back into the game where I had to know I wanted to one interact with these characters that I learned about in the world building so I want to find them and they, if I fight them or if I injure I want to see what happens in their story and I want to know what the result will be what the end will be and so an external piece of media gave me a crucial key thing I needed as a player, as a, as a, you know, a viewer, a reader you could even call it because I mean partaking in a story crucial elements to make me want to finish the story which makes me want to finish the game here is where another very big fundamental flaw in his video arises he explains that he played up to godric the first demigod and then restarted the game played through it again only up to the first main boss and then quit because he felt like he had experienced the game in full now i believe that speaks for itself so i'm not going to harp on that elden ring is a massive game limgrave and stormvale castle is less than five percent of the map so it reasons that you're not going to get the core main elements of the story and the huge climaxes of world building that you're looking for in basically the tutorial area. The game has so much to offer and if you're playing in this huge world that you haven't even scratched the surface of, then obviously you're not going to scratch the surface of the story too. But here's the thing, if he had taken the time to read the lore of the items he found along his way, and keep a keen eye out for the environmental storytelling, he would have found the traces of everything he was looking for. And I've got a video coming out about this, probably the next video, but Stormvale Castle offers hints to everything and some of the biggest twists in the game. Just because it's not shown through a cutscene doesn't mean it doesn't exist. But I want to move on to another point. See Fort Renala? <laughs> How, how cool was the second phase? How beautiful was that? The big moon and everything? Ah, oh, it, was, it was an amazing game, right? I wouldn't have gotten there, though, if I didn't look into the world book. Like, I would have missed out on all this cool stuff. And also, the thing is, though, when her fight, it was like confusing gobbledygook what she was saying. Then I looked up some of her history. I saw what the references she was saying in her gobbledygook and how awesome her and her heartbreaking her story is. Yet I still didn't get any of that in any version of clarity from the game itself. God, she's she's you. hugging a golden egg. What is that thing? I, I find out that this that was not. I didn't find out in the game. I found out from an external source that was actually a gift from a spurned lover who she's really uh, heartbroken over and hung up on, and how, and the reasons why he left and all that stuff. And it's this heartbreaking tale. This perfectly illustrates the problem with what he says, because everything he just said is objectively wrong. Renala's story is perfectly told. If you take the time to explore Rhea Lucaria, you'll find the teleporter that takes you to the Church of Vows, where the NPC tells you all of Renala's story. The game tells you the story. Just because you didn't take the time to explore and didn't find it, that isn't a fault of the game. And the video is an hour long, but I kid you not, everything he says in the entire video can be traced back to that. Simply put, the story of the game does exist, but he did not give it the respect it deserves to seek it out. And ultimately, he doesn't understand the appeal of the story. It's open-ended and obtuse for a reason. Yes, he's correct in saying the story doesn't have an ending, 
but it's meant to be completed by the player's interpretation, just as you would if you were the tarnished in the game. A simple thing that they could have done which would have improved the immersion into Elden Ring's story vastly more than what you get in the game is that every time you reach a new area they have a cutscene with Melina and she can warn you about the dangers of the area and its current state and propose some type of mystery referencing perhaps the boss battle that is to come. And that would have made me at least and I feel a lot of players vastly more invested in the story and what's going on in each new area. Because in the area with the academy I had no idea what was going on in the academy and I knew nothing of the story to draw me there apart from I saw a really big place that maybe I'll explore but if I knew some things about it the dangers that were there who is in power who I might have to fight I would have been so much more invested to want to find out what happened and then I also might have understood some of those cryptic messages in the cutscene in what plays after you defeat the big boss of that area. The game quite literally does exactly what he says right there. When you discover a new area or kill a demigod, there will be an NPC called a finger reader on the natural path that tells you about the area and its ruler. If that's not enough for you, you can go back to Roundtable Hold and talk to Sir Gideon Offnir and he will tell you all of the exposition you need on the remaining demigods, where to find them, and their story. And that's what I was saying, every point he mentions in this video simply comes down to the fact that he did not take the time to explore and didn't give the story enough respect to seek it out. And that's what has me a little bit worried about the future of From Software games. We as Souls fans know how to look for these things, know how to treat these games, and that's why we love them so much is because there's really nothing else like them. Elden Ring is not trying to be like other games where it spoon feeds you the story, no matter how good it is. And so please do not get this taken away from us by trying to promote this as a problem of the game rather than a problem of the user. The story is complete, it's all there in the game, you just have to go look for it. But guys, that's going to pretty much do it for the video. I thought this was important to talk about, because a lot of people are going to see that and think it's a problem with Elden Ring, when the things he's saying are factually untrue. But I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, please leave a like on it, and do me a favor and go check out the Alchemy video, I worked really hard on that, and I think you're going to enjoy it a lot. Subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll catch you in the next one.